use us for the glory of your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Again, I welcome you all to the worship service today in Jesus' name. By the grace of God, we have been blessed richly through the teachings that we've had so far and through the music ministrations. And I pray that you'll be blessed much more even as we share together in the world in Jesus' name. We are going straight into the world today. I will be looking at the subject of men of like passion. Shall we all say that? Men of like passion. And today's sermon is to make us see the possibility and the potential that we have by the grace of God. The potential that you have, the possibilities of God in you, no matter what your past might have been, or whatever your current present situation may be, you can make a difference in life. You can turn the table around. You can change the course of life and be a blessing to your generation. And I pray that you be a blessing indeed to your generation in Jesus' name. Never give up on yourself. And I hear you say that to yourself. Never give up on yourself. You are a work in progress. Amen. The Lord will perfect you in Jesus' name. God is not done with you yet. You can make it in life. Say to yourself, I can make it in life. Can you say it one more time? I can make it in life. Can you now say it more affirmatively? I will make it in life. And surely you will in Jesus' name. My text is taken from the book of James, chapter 5. And look at it from the 17th verse. James, chapter 5, verse 17. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again. And the heaven gave rain. And the earth brought forth her fruit. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him, let him know that he which converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save his soul from death. I hide a multitude of sin. Here we see the scripture telling us something unique. Talking about Elijah or Elias as he was formerly and later referred to in the Greek uh, language. A man of like passion as we are. That is a statement that speaks a volume. The record of the prophet Elijah unveiled to us the story of an ordinary man that went from zero to hero. An ordinary man who did great exploit for God and for humanity. During his time on earth, Elijah, the man of God, the Tishbite, a man that was never known from the beginning suddenly showed up. And there was a timing of his showing up. He showed up at such a time that Christ, um, uh, morality, godliness, righteousness, holiness, purity was at its lowest ebb in the land of Israel. It was at a time when the king that was ruling and reigning, King Ahab, had no regard for God, and as a matter of fact, was being controlled by an ungodly wife, Jezebel. It was such a time that idolatry had taken over the land, and godliness was nowhere anymore. And even the so-called prophets were swept away. Then showed up this man called Elijah. 
to defend the cause of God, to defend the glory of God. Yes, Elijah knew he was confronting the powers of the time, but he knew there was only one person to fear, and that person is who? God. Elijah knew that somebody had to stand up for the truth. Somebody had to stand up for righteousness. Somebody had to stand up and declare the righteousness of God. And Elijah became that man. I pray that in this time and age, you will be the man of God for the hour in Jesus' name. Elijah was able to do that because of his faith in the Lord. And because of his relationship with God. Like any man, he had his own ups and downs. He had his own successes and failures. He had his bad times and good times. He had the times of courage and times of cowardice. Times of fear and times of weaknesses. And yet, he was a man of God. Through his prayer, the prayer of Elijah, God would head rain from Israel for three years and six months. And through his prayer, again, God sent down rain upon the people. How mighty, how effectual, how great the prayer of a saint can be. The Lord will make you another Elijah in Jesus' name. And during the time of famine, three years, three and a half years of no rain, God took care of Elijah. I'm here to let you know the Lord will take care of you. No matter the situation in the land, the Lord will take care of you. Pandemic or no pandemic, pandemic or pandemonium, the Lord will take care of you. They say thousands of companies have folded up and a lot of people have lost their job. Hear the word of the Lord. The Lord will take care of you. I said the Lord will take care of you. There is fear within and fear without, and people are scared. Don't touch this. Don't go there. Don't do that. In the midst of it all, the Lord will take care of you. Listen to hear. In the midst of the pandemic, when the churches began to open afresh, early August, we're told of a particular church that as the came first time face to face they began to mention the seeds dead, dead, dead in one church 50 people gone but for us I said but for us I said but for us and look at all the churches from New York all the way to Florida and not a single soul. Not a single soul. The Lord will take care of you. It's not by power. It's not by mind. Pay attention. It's not because we are more righteous than others. It's by the mercy of God. It's not because we are more conscientious or faithful or committed. It's by the mercy of God. And so we cannot be proud of anything. Whenever we see all this, we're just giving thanks to God. Are we together? Uh, in the midst and the thickness of the pandemic, if you were on the prayer line, I told you all that we should praise God for what he has done. I said, if anybody had died, we still would have come and praised God. Did you remember? So whether somebody died or not, we're still going to praise God. And now that he has kept us alive, we bless his holy name. Somebody there shout, praise the Lord. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. But then, but then, the point I'm making is, when you're a child of God, he makes a wish for you. He protects you. He preserves you. He prospers you. He perfects you. And he uses you in Jesus' name famine in the land. People were dying. As a matter of fact, it was so bad that some people were killing their own children for food. At a time like that, God fed Elijah with blood, raven. Raven, 
get food, go and give to Elijah my servant. At such a time, God fed Elijah with an angel. Angel, your servants, go and serve my servants. At such a time, you remember, the widow of Zarephath. She had endured and endured and persevered. She had managed and managed and managed and rationed and rationed everything. And now, the last meal for her and the son to eat, and after that, nothing. When it looks like an end is coming your way, the Lord will make a way. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. Because he walks in ways that we cannot see. In your situation, it will make ways for you. All of a sudden, Elijah showed up. Miracle will show up at that just there. And Elijah himself was hungry. And he showed up in the house of a family that was ready to die. Welcome, man of God. Yes. We do. I know you have no husband. I know you have a little child. This is not just a time of greeting. The man of God is hungry. The man of God. This is all we have. And it's just for me and my son. Understand? Are you taking care of the man of God first? The attention. When you take care of the things of God first, God will take care of personal things. And the woman was not given a promise of anything. She obeyed. Elijah ate. She blessed her and she lived. Somebody here will leave. Somebody here will leave. All these were fulfilling the purpose of the ministry of this man, Elijah. The Bible says, that man, Elijah, was a man of like passion. He got to a dead person, the dead came back to land. He turned around the situation of the land and brought the revival to the land. Do you remember, Elijah alone, he told Ahab, he said, get me all the prophets of Bea, 450 of them. And then they got all of them together. And then another 400 uh, prophets, making 850 in all. And then he challenged them, call upon your God. And then I call upon my God. When you are confident of the God you serve, nothing will move you. I said nothing will move you. The wind may be blowing, the, 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 the storm may be raging, nothing is going to move you in Jesus' name. And the prophets of Baal and the other 400 prophets, they all prayed, they all chanted, they all did all kinds of things. They were cutting their body, they were, they were dancing, they were beating their drum, they were doing all the acrobatic stuff. And Elijah was watching. Elijah was waiting because Elijah knew there is no other God than the God of Israel. And at the end of the day, when nothing happened, Elijah was even, I like the sense of humor of Elijah. He said, maybe your God is sleeping. Wake him up. He said, maybe he has gone on a journey. What kind of God are you serving? Your, the God that sleeps, my God never sleeps no slumber. The one that goes on a journey, no, he stay with me all the time. And nothing happened. Morning till evening, nothing happened. And like I just said, no, listen. Let me show and prove to you which God is the real God. And for any short time, the fire fell. The fire fell. When you serve God in truth and in spirit, He backs you up. He favors your cause. Men of like passion, God is looking for them today. I pray they will find that man in you in Jesus' name.
Elijah became one of the most prominent prophets in Israel's history. God used him to bring great revival. God is looking for men and women to bring revival to our land today. America needs revival. Did you hear what I said? America needs what? Revival. Let me say this. Pentecostalism has filled the world. The church of our time has filled the world. The churches of today is concerned more about money, about fame, about power, about politics. Politics. When you hear the news of what is happening in churches, what is happening to pastors, you wonder what is Christianity. Oh, please pay attention. No matter what may be happening out there, God is holy. God is righteous. God is pure. And Jesus is still saving souls today. So, do not allow yourself to be discouraged. He has told us, he that endures to the end shall be saved. He has told us, by the time he comes back, will he find faith on earth? He has told us all this. So, don't be disappointed. And if you're a minister, don't allow the fact that churches are multiplying in number. Let not that discourage you. Betray you. And, make, and begin to think, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? Christianity is not about number. It's about righteousness. It's about holiness. And God is looking for men like Elijah that are genuinely converted. Men like, like Elijah that knows their God. Men like Elijah that will put themselves and their lives on the line. Men like Elijah that will not mind the number but just declare the word of the Lord. Men like Elijah. How many members did Elijah have? We know of only one servant following him. What was the name? Elijah. Elijah. Yet, with one servant, one servant, he shook the land. With one servant, he called heaven to open. With one servant, he made an impact. God is looking for another Elijah. I pray he will find me worthy in Jesus' name. And I pray he will find you worthy in Jesus' name. We're looking at three points. Number one, the universality of men of like passion. The universality of men of like passion. Point number two, the uniqueness of men of lifetime profession. Lifetime profession. Number three, the unmatched ministry of men of livelihood. The unmatched ministry of men of lively hope. Point one, the universality of men of like passion. The term men of like passion depicts people of the same nature, the same challenges, the same trouble, aspirations, the same expectations in life, the same ambition, infirmities, careers, and so on and so forth. So when the Bible says men of like passion, the Bible is saying that Elijah was not just someone that was dropped from heaven. Elijah was not just someone that didn't know what it means to be human. Elijah was not someone that didn't go through the pain and the ache that we all are going through. Elijah, as you could see from where, where some of the things I have said, he was a man that was hungry like you. He was a man that was discouraged like you. He was a man that faced challenges of life like you and I. He was a man with ambition for his life. He was a man of troubles and a man of sorrow, a man of aspiration, a man of infirmity. You know, at a point, Elijah, the same man that killed 450 prophets of Baal, even though some were saying, were they 450 or 850? Well, the 
Bible didn't tell us about 850. Yes, 450 prophets of Beer, and then the other 400 prophets of Asherah, they were all there, but eventually the Bible talked about killing prophets of Beer. What happened to the prophets of Asherah? The Bible was silent on that, and I don't want to go there. Amen. Whether he killed the whole 850 or only 450, but what the Bible says, I will just stop right there. The point I'm making is this. This man, Elijah, was able to confront all these people. So you can tell the kind of a person that he was. And just like us, Elijah got discouraged men of God that were used in the years gone by. The apostles that were used in the years gone by talk about a man called Abraham, the father of faith. Talk about Isaac. Talk about Jacob. And Jacob actually meeting with Pharaoh said all his years was full of sorrow and trouble. And then you came to people like Elisha. You see a man like Jeremiah. Jeremiah got the point that he even caused the day that he was born. He caused the people that, that took, uh, brought news of his birth to, to, uh, to the world. It was that bad. He ate bread of affliction just for standing for the Lord, declaring the whole truth of the gospel. Now, come to the apostles. Peter was in prison. Paul and Silas were jailed. And then you see some of them were killed on and on like that. They all were men of like passion as we are. You saw Peter denied the Lord. He was weak at some point of his life. Judas, an apostle, sold his master, betrayed him. Demons, you had of him at the point, but sleep completely. Men of like passion as we are. All these things were written because of us that we may learn from all this. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So the real men of God that were used in the days gone by were discouraged. Are you going through discouragement? They were disappointed. They were distressed. They were depressed. They were tempted. They were tried. They were traumatized. They were hungry. They were thirsty. They were homeless. They were jobless. They were vulnerable like any other person. They were simple in their original state. They were not born saints. They were lost in sin and in trespasses. Yet, they were cleansed. They were converted. They were consecrated. They were committed. They were commissioned. They were coronated. They were cooperative with God. They were comely. They were courageous. They were com uh, they, 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 they were visionary people. Now, the brother ministry earlier said there are many sinners in this church. I said no, there are not many sinners. In this church. Are you a sinner? I said are you a sinner? I said, are you a sinner? If you're a sinner here, you don't belong. What I mean by that is, you can be hearing the word of God and the desire to change, the desire to repent is not there and you don't belong. Come up to me, all you that believe. Is it possible that there are people that are not born again? Yes. You are still working on me. You are not there yet. But one thing that attracted me to this church is the fact that this church has preaches and starts a new. It's a church that does not oppose. It's a church that does not think about the position of time to the status of purple or anything. I told you I didn't get converted in this job, but I saw what it was. I said, This is where I belong. 
a place where I won't have the laxity, freedom, and the liberty to live as I want to live. A place where I can be reminded from time to time that I am a slave of Christ. A place where if I go wrong, I can be corrected and chastised. The Bible says that it is a child that the father loveth and he chastises. There are places where there is no chastisement. There is no correction. There is no review. Anybody knows whatsoever they want to do. Some caution. Some caution. And I've been in this church now for many years. Almost 40 years. Lies transformed. Yeah. Could there be a pocket of a backslider there? Yes. Could there be a pocket of a sinner there that strayed into the church? Yes. Could there be a pocket of a sinner there that is not ready to be saved? Yes. But from the overall, this is the church of the redeemed. I said this is the church of the redeemed. You know, because Judas is carried back sleep. You don't see many backsliders in there among the disciples of Jesus. Is that the way it goes? Because Satan falls in heaven and with his tail through one third of the angels, you don't see most of the angels are sinners and backsliders. That's not the way you go for it. So when we make some statements, let's be careful. Let's be careful. So that we don't weaken and dampen the heart and the spirit of people. By the grace of God, see anybody, anywhere that is not living according to the world will deal with it. Praise the Lord. And that is what makes deeper life different. And I told you a few weeks ago, it's not only deeper life, there are many churches out there. They may not have big name. And they may not be called deeper life. But they are the churches of the they are people that knows what salvation is about. They love the Lord and they are ready to die for what they believe. And so it is deeper life by nature. And it doesn't matter whether you are in Europe, you are in Asia, you are in America, you are in Africa, wherever, the church of the redeemed is the church of the redeemed. We have one thing in common. The blood of Jesus. The name of Jesus. The word of God. The fear of God. The Spirit of God, the presence of God, and the power of the Lord. Are you born again? Are you born again? If not, you can turn over your life to Christ today. If you are not saved, then our neighbors and efforts are in vain. Paul said, if only in this life we have hope, then we have all men the most miserable. But our labors will not be in vain. In the name of Jesus, men of like passion, were people born in sin, raised in sin, by choice, by environment, by everything, they were sinners, but they had an encounter with God. They were saved. They were transformed. They were converted. They were renewed. And the Lord commissioned them. Somebody here will be commissioned. They were coronated. Somebody here will be coronated in Jesus' name. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 2 and 3. Wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world. In time past, no more. According to the prince of the power of the air. Pay attention here. Most of the things that many people are doing, the behavior, the action, the attitude, the conduct, the character, the dressing, are being controlled by the spirit of the air. There is a spirit in the air controlling the affairs of men that are not redeemed. The affairs of men that are not born again. It's not that uh, this one goes to church, that one goes to church. It's not about going to church. Even the devil goes to church. Did you hear what I just said? Even the devil goes to church. In the book of Job chapter 1, the children of God, they gather together and one stranger showed up there. Who was that? The devil showed up too. 
But he was just one person. He was just one person. And every Satan in our midst, the Lord will cast out. In the name of Jesus. The prince of the power of the air. The spirit that now walketh in the children of who? Disobedience. Disobedience. Paul is saying, that is who we used to be, but no more. That is how we used to live, but no more. That is how we used to act and behave, but no more. That is under whose control we used to be, but no more. Now we are redeemed. He says in verse 3, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the loss of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature the children of wrath even as others so men of like passion that's who we used to be Romans chapter 3 verse 23 says, For all have sinned and come short. Inadequate. Of the glory of God. And when you lack the glory, you will be, di you, 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 you will be, you, you will be disgraced. Because glory comes as a result of grace. And when the grace is not there, the disgrace will come. Romans chapter 3 verse 10 tells us, as it is written, there is none righteous. I'm sharing all this for us to know that these men we are talking about that were used of God, were people like us in our normal, natural, sinful nature until they had the encounter with God. And God turned things around. And if you ever say you had an encounter with God, your life must be transformed. The change must be seen. The newness of life must be seen. Christ must be seen in you. You're no longer under the control of the spirit of this age, the power in the air, but right now under the control of the spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit of God. Because every man on earth is under the control of one spirit or the other. It's either the spirit of the devil or the spirit of the living God. I believe somebody here is under the control of the spirit of God. As it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They all are gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Their throat is an open sepulchre. With their tongue they have used the seed. The poison of asp is under their lips whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swept to shed blood, destruction, and mystery in their way. And the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. That is the natural man without Christ. That is the natural man without God. That is a natural man under the spirit of this age. And so we were until we had an encounter. Until we had an encounter. If you were like that, and then you are still like that, you have not had that encounter. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, if any man had an encounter with Christ, if any man knows of Christ, if any man has the spirit of Christ, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All the things are passed away. He says, behold. If you are genuinely born again, your language will change. Your action will change. Your attitude will change. Your behavior will, will change. Listen to this. Your friends will change. Your dressing will change. The kind of business will you do will change. 
the way you do the business will change because uh, there is a way the world does their thing that you the redeemed of the lord the child of the kingdom cannot do it that way anymore there are places you used to go before you came to christ now as a child of god you can't go to those places anymore pay attention you need no pastor you need no body no teacher no mentor to tell you don't do this don't do that the spirit of the lord god of heaven will be you will guide you will instruct you will direct you and will make you to know no you can't do that no you can't do that way no you can't go there no you can't put on that dress if indeed you are under the control of the spirit of the lord it's not going to be by argument, by coercion, by compulsion, by force. No, 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 no. The Spirit of the Lord, the quest for those things, to tell lies, the quest to steal, the quest for immorality, everything will be gone completely from you. That is the nature of sin. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. Isaiah chapter 64. I look at it from verse 6. Isaiah 64 verse 6. But we all as unclean thing and all our righteousness are as filthy rags. And we all do fade as a leaf and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. And there is none that calleth upon thy name that seareth of himself to take hold of thee. For thou hast hid thy face from us and hast consumed us because of our iniquities. But now, somebody say, but now. Oh Lord, thou art our father. I need an amen there. We are the clay, and thou art potter, and we all are the works of thy hand. When you have that encounter with God, God becomes your father. You become the handwork of the Lord. You become a precious jewel in the hands of the Almighty God. Then He begins to watch over you. He begins to protect you. He begins to preserve you. He begins to guide you. Elijah, Elijah, Peter, Moses, all of them were like that until they had an encounter. Don't you remember? Moses was a murderer. Before he had the encounter with God. Don't you understand? Peter denied the Lord. Don't you understand? Abraham, as such, he was born into idolatry and God called him out. But then, in the midst of the calling, he listened to the wise counsel, contrary to God's command. And that simple disobedience, that wrong counsel, is what has plunged the world into the religious crisis we're having today. Don't you understand? I'm not sure if you, are, if you ever thought of this. That the enmity between Islam, and you know we have gotten to play a point in life that to even mention some names we are afraid. The enmity between Islam and Christianity is so grave, so great, so mighty, that you don't see that kind of enmity between traditionalists and Christianity, traditionalists and uh, Islam. No. Because of one man's sin, the trouble has come upon the world. The Lord will deliver us in Jesus' name. But Abraham did not dwell there. He came out of it. You will come out. I say you will come out. And the Lord will turn things around for you in Jesus' name. How I pray that you will not be a tool in the hand of the devil. In the name of Jesus. So we can see the commonality of the natural man. They all were sinners like any humanity. They all were qualified for damnation and death as repercussion for their sin. Romans chapter 6 verse 23 says, 
for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why you must repent of your sin and turn to Christ Jesus. They all have struggles. These men of like passion, they all had their struggles and challenges in life. Job tells us in Job chapter 14, verses 1 and 2, it says, man that is born of a woman is of few days and full of trouble. Full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fled also as a shadow and continueth not. These people, men of like passion, were all men that had their fears at some point. Abraham had his own fear. Job had his own fear. The apostles had their own fear. Job chapter 3 verse 25. For the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come upon me. Job was considered the most righteous, the most holy person of his age, of his time, of his dispensation. Yet, he had his own fear. His own fear. So, if you're a child of God for the fact that you are afraid, does not mean you have lost your faith. Amen? It's just part of life. Just part of life. These people, men of like passion, all went through dejection disappointments and depression at one point or the other in their lives. They all had their battles to fight and devils to overcome. Don't you see what the Bible tells us? Don't you know? Don't you read? Don't you put your heart in Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10 where the Bible says finally my brethren, brethren are the redeemed, the converted, the transformed, the saved ones, free from sin, brethren, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wise of the enemy. There is a battle to fight. The enemy is at war. You were delivered from him. He wants you to get, he wants to get you back. Don't you know? After Egypt left, after Israel left Egypt, Pharaoh was still going after them. Listen to me. The devil is still after you, brother. The devil is still after you, sister. But in the name of the Lord, he will fail. By the power of the Most High God, he will fail. Just like Pharaoh and his soldiers perish in the sea, all the enemies of your life will perish alike in Jesus' name. You came out already. You are journey to heaven already. You are happy you were free. You are happy you are saved. You are happy you are holy. You are happy you are righteous. But the temptation is coming. The trial is coming. The enemy is coming. The Lord will subdue them all. And many a times, if the enemy cannot really get you, he uses your immediate family against you. The Bible says that a man's foes are members of where? His own house. It may be your son, your daughter, your wife, your husband, your mother, your father, because they know that if the people from outside cannot penetrate into you, those within your own household, they know your in and out, your oppression and density. Don't you understand? When they, 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 the people of the time were to arrest Jesus, they couldn't get him until they got one of his disciples. But the Lord will deliver you. The Lord will save you. Come back to Ephesians chapter 6. Now, verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We, you, I, all of us together, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against who now? Tell me. Principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness. Where? In high places. We are in a battlefield. The battle for our soul. The battle for the souls of men. Men of like passion. 
Some of you, you came to Christ and you thought, as soon as you get born again, the battle is over. No, the battle is just beginning in a new dimension. But I have the good news for you. You will prevail. You will prevail. The men of life, passion, all contemplated quitting. And even die. So, if you are going through some challenges as a Christian now, and you are thinking, well, maybe I should throw in the towel. There were people before you that thought like that. Peter thought that way. Don't you remember? Peter got up and left and thought all was over. The good thing is, Peter repented of what he did. No matter what has happened between the time of your conversion and now. If you will not sit down in that uh, place of despondency and discouragement and despair, if you will get up like Peter got up, if you will move out like Peter moved out, if you will weep and weep and wail and cry back unto God like Peter did, mercy is coming your way. Forgiveness is coming your way. But if the devil deceives you and gets you and says, well, you fell, you fell already. It's all over for you. I declare it's not over for you. It's not over with you in Jesus' name. When Jesus rose up from the dead, he said, go and tell my disciples. And who? And Peter also. He specifically mentioned Peter because Peter thought it was over. Tell somebody it's not over yet. Tell somebody your life is not over. Tell somebody your ministry is not over. The race is not over yet. Don't throw in the towel. Don't give in to all the evil suggestions of the devil coming onto you. People contemplated quitting. Elijah contemplated not just quitting, dying. He actually pleaded with God, take my life. You will not die. You know, in, in Colossians chapter 4, verse 17, there, were, there, there was this man called Archippus. We don't know what he was going through. We don't know what was going through him. But Paul sent a message unto him and said, say unto Archippus, Take heed to the ministry which thou hast received in the Lord, that thou fulfill it. How I declare and prophesy in the name of the Lord, you will fulfill your ministry. You will not perish by the wayside. The enemy will not get hold of you. In the name of Jesus. Don't give up. Don't give up. Are you weak? Somebody was weak before. You feel discouraged? Somebody felt discouraged before. Don't you know the people, the soldiers of uh, David at the point uh, when uh, the, the families of all this, everybody, including so David's family, were all taken captives uh, and their place in Siglas were burned down. They took a stone to stone David to death. And David, uh, David was discouraged within that these people I have taken with me all these many years, uh, they know my in and out, my oppressing and down sitting, uh, and they know and uh, that my family, my wife, my children are equally gone, and yet they want to stone me, and David felt it's over, but then the Bible says, David encouraged himself in the Lord. There's somebody encouraged yourself in the Lord. Listen, listen, listen. No matter the encouragement I'm giving you, no matter the encouragement anybody is giving you, it is when you get to a point of encouraging yourself in the Lord that things will turn around. And for somebody, something is turning around. I get to the second point, the uniqueness of men of lifetime profession. If you have a profession, what is that profession? Considering the, uh, the similarity in the nature and the manner of the life of every humanity, the life of sin, the nature of sin. Can we then conclude that no man is qualified for sacred, sacred assignment? The answer is no. The answer is no. What then will qualify us? What qualifies some of them 
that were greatly used by God. Because after you, by nature, by birth, by choice, all humanity were sinners, are sinners. A child that will be born today will be born a sinner. But then, what differentiates the uniqueness? The uniqueness. When I use that word uniqueness, uniqueness, I use it in a unique way. I use uniqueness in a unique way. Did you get that grammar? What do I mean by that word? It means the individuality. What you have to do yourself. Now, we, have, we are all in the same shoe, in the same bowl. In the same situation, now, the uniqueness, unique, uh, individuality, what you have to do individually, the exclusiveness, what you have to do, go to dictionary, I got all this from the dictionary, I'm not making them up. The exclusiveness that will differentiate your action from that of other people, it means the exceptionality. What is it that will exempt you? The realness, things that others don't do. The carnal man is not humble. The carnal man is not repentant. The carnal man does not admit fault and error. And yet the Bible says, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves for you to be genuinely converted, for you to be genuinely restored, there must be humility first. You don't find that in a common, in, 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 in a normal person. For you to do that, it means you are unique. Something is different about you. And that word uniqueness means the matchlessness. When we put you side by side with the other person, there is no match. There is no equality between the two of you. So, now that we understand, what that word unique or uniqueness stands for. The uniqueness of men of lifetime profession. They were men who realized their human perversion and exchanged it for God's purity. They were men who exchanged their weakness for God's wellness. The word wellness there is for strength. They were weak. God is strong. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 29 to 31. He give power to the faint and to them that have no might. He increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall do what? Renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagle. Pay attention here. Not like eagle. No. But as eagle, what does that tell me? It tells me that even though I am a human being with one hand, with one, with one head, with two hands, with two legs, on the inside I am an eagle. When I think of an eagle, eagle is never deterred. Storm never bothers eagle. Wind actually helps eagle. Fire is no problem for eagle. Opposition, persecution is no problem for eagle. Serpents on the floor, no problem for eagle. Eagle soars high. Hear the word of the Lord. You are an eagle. You are soaring higher. You are going up higher. Spiritually higher. Materially higher. That's the plan of God for you. Men of like passion of light passion. It says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. When you extend your weakness for the wellness of God, that will be your, uh, your portion. That will be what makes you unique. People we are talking about these men of like passion that were used of God, they extend their human failure for God's fruitfulness. You have labored and labored and it appears you have failed and failed. God says, learn of me. Learn of me. I will teach you the way. 
They turn from trusting self to trusting the Lord. Knowing that the arm of the flesh will always fail. The book of Psalm 37 verses 4 and 5 over there tells us, Delight thyself in the Lord and he shall give you what? The desires. The desires. The desires of life. Do you have any desires? If you are born again, your desires will be holy desires. Righteous desires. Pure desires. Upright desires. In Jesus' name. So, these people, unique people, with lifetime profession, profession of salvation, profession of encounter with God, profession of the fear of God in them, profession of their love for God, profession of the grace of God in their life, they people that were devoted, dedicated, decisive, disciplined, visionary, and focused. If we all are subject to the problems and challenges of life, what qualifies us to be the of God? What qualifies us as is it ministry of men of life. The unmatched ministry. Jesus says, so send I you. So send I you. I told you about Elijah. He was a nobody. 